Welcome to our Easter Sunday Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather here today to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus, let us first acknowledge our sins and our weaknesses, then ask our risen Lord to extend his mercy forgiveness, and abiding peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel sing. His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has struck with power. The Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. 
let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and she saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. That proclamation is proclaimed throughout the world as Christians gather to celebrate the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to celebrate his victory over sin and death. And yet when we look at the beginning of our gospel today, we neither see gladness nor rejoicing in the life of Mary Magdalene. We see that she comes to her the tomb of Jesus, and we're told that it, while it was still dark. Now the Gospel writer isn't just giving us a reference to the time of day. That darkness is reflected, first of all, in Mary's own heart and soul. After all, here is Jesus, the one she got to know, to love, brutally murdered on Good Friday placed in this tomb. Now she comes with all those emotions that we experience at the death of a loved one, sorrow, sadness, grief, and shock. She's in the darkness of all of that. And now she comes to the tomb and notice that the tomb, the stone, is rolled away. Her conclusion is that someone has stole the body of Jesus. Now insult has been added to this, and she goes running to tell the apostles. We see that Peter and John come to the tomb. They notice two things. The tomb is empty and the burial cloths are laid aside. We see that the disciple whom Jesus loved comes to believe. And now the unraveling of the mystery of the resurrection begins. This, of course, is only one story that deals with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today, of course, we celebrate Easter Sunday, but we know this is the beginning of a period of time in our church. Begins the liturgical season of Easter. Fifty days we spend reflecting on the glorious resurrection of Jesus. During that time, we come across some other stories of individuals who come to an awareness of the risen Christ from their experience of him, the impact that it has upon them, and how it's transformed them. Think of Mary in another gospel passage, when she comes to the tomb in the garden, and she sees a person there, it's the risen Lord, she doesn't recognize him, she thinks it's the gardener. She approaches him and asks, where have you laid him, so I may take him away? 
And notice what the risen Lord does. He says one word to her, Mary. And at that moment, the resurrection fills her heart and soul. She comes to an awareness she is in the presence of the risen Lord. Think of those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. They too were marked by darkness in their life. Their whole world has come crashing down. They thought Jesus was the Lord, the Messiah. They put their hope and future in him. And now he's dead. It all comes crashing down. The risen Lord comes into their experience. They don't recognize him. But notice when they do recognize him. First, their hearts are burning as Jesus opens the scriptures to them. But they recognize the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread, the Eucharist. And notice what it does. It propels them to go and proclaim good news. When we look at Peter, for example, we know he's locked away in the upper room, full of fear and darkness, because they're afraid of the authorities. They're afraid of what happened to Jesus, what happened to them. They're locked away. And as in many of Jesus' resurrection appearances, he comes and appears before them. And he extends a greeting to them. Peace be with you. During that 50-day period then, we see that these apostles, these disciples, not only come to an awareness of the resurrection, they experience the risen Lord, and there's a transformation that takes place within them. At the end of that 50-day period, when we gather for the celebration of Pentecost, we see those apostles who were once afraid, locked away in darkness, are now filled with the Spirit of God, courageous men who go forth to proclaim the good news. Doesn't that, isn't that where we find Peter in the first reading today, proclaiming the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the effect that it has, the taking away of sins. They are courageous people. Today, we celebrate again Easter Sunday. But what we gather here today to celebrate is not just a place in time. We're not just reflecting on an historical event, certainly an event that took place. We're not simply here today to remember what transpired. Certainly, it's powerful to spend some time reflecting on what that victory of Jesus did for us. But there's more to it. Notice what our acclamation said. Today is the day the Lord has made. Today he is risen. Pay attention, my dear brothers and sisters, to those present tense words. Today is Easter. This is the day. We need to hear that. You see, Easter is not a moment in time only. The victory of Jesus Christ transcends time. It is present here today. The effects of that victory are to be experienced today, tomorrow, the next day, until Christ comes again in power and glory at the end of time. Don't we refer to ourselves as Easter people? Not just today. It is who we are. Don't we refer to each Sunday as a little Easter? It's a time we gather as a community, again, to reflect who we are and what we're about, to proclaim the victory of Jesus Christ. We are touched to all these saving effects most beautifully in the sacrament of baptism. Our celebration today focuses on baptism. Because you see, at baptism, it's where we encounter the risen Christ for the first time. It is there that he calls us by name. He calls us to those waters. And as St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, when we are plunged into the waters of baptism, we share in his death. That moment in Calvary becomes our reality. And rising from those waters, we rise to a new life, a glorious way of existence. We've been changed, transformed, renewed, recreated. There was a word that was used for baptism years ago, and it's a beautiful word, a christening. We are to be Christ, the risen Christ. And as a result of baptism, we are to live differently. We are to conduct ourselves differently. We are to love differently. 
We are to forgive differently. We are to live and love and forgive as Jesus Christ does. And to the extent that we reveal that in the world today, the power of Jesus' victory is made real. That is what we are to be about. Now notice, we're in a world of darkness, right? The pandemic, the coronavirus. There's a lot to be afraid and fearful of and uncertain about the future. But yet, in the midst of all that, comes the risen Christ. And in the midst of that, we are to deal with it as people of hope, even people of joy, with the realization that Christ is with us. Part of that baptismal motif is the idea of light. We are children of the light, and we are to bring the light into the midst of darkness. And these past several weeks, haven't we seen those moments of people dealing with this coronavirus, dealing with the darkness that surrounds them, bringing about that image of light, making real Easter. Just like to share with you a couple stories. One was a, a, a scene out on a front porch. Two children were learning to play instruments. Part of their day was to practice. But rather than sitting at home practicing their instruments, they went to an elderly neighbor, sat on the porch, distanced themselves, and played their music for the elderly woman. She is sitting on the porch with a smile on her face. In the midst of darkness, there is light. Easter is present there. There was another situation of a woman in her neighborhood. There was a lot of children living there. She gathered up colored chalk, spread it down the streets along the curbside. Word got out to the children. She encouraged them to take the chalk, keeping their distances, and to simply draw hearts along the entire street. They had a drone flying above, and you can see these hearts, different colors, different sizes, words of inspiration, light in darkness, the victory of Christ's resurrection revealed. Easter is present. Most beautiful way, perhaps, was a group of nurses they focused on up in New York. They were ICU nurses. They spent countless hours dealing with patients with the coronavirus. After their shift was over, rather than going home, relaxing, getting something to eat, gathering sleep, they went back into the IC units on their own time. And the reason they were there was to be instruments of light as these people were dying. Family could not be there, and they didn't want their loved ones to die alone. So these nurses took the iPads, held it up for these people, the families outside, to say their last words, their farewell to their loved ones. They held their hand. They wiped their brow. The light in the midst of darkness, the power of Easter today, that's what the victory of Christ is all about. That's what you and I are to be about. Not just in times of crisis, but every day to be the light in the midst of darkness, to make the reality of Easter present today, tomorrow, and the next day. We are called to proclaim the good news. Well, what is the good news? It's the good news that Jesus has triumphed over sin and evil, and so will we, if we open our hearts to the power of Easter. It's the good news that Jesus is ready to work miracles for us, if we open our hearts to the power of Easter. It's the good news that every Good Friday in our lives can be turned into Easter Sunday, if we open our hearts to the power of Easter. It's the good news that we don't have to wait until we die to share in the life of the risen Christ. We can begin right now at this Mass, at this Easter celebration. It's the good news that nothing can defeat us anymore. Not pain, not sorrow, not rejection, not even death. Christ is risen today, and so are we. And so we cry out, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Happy Easter, and God bless you all.
we will continue now with the renewal of our baptismal promises. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled upon us as a memorial of our baptism. May he graciously renew us, that we may remain faithful to the Spirit whom we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people who keep vigil on this most sacred day, and for us who recall the wondrous works of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ has made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupt nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the passion we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of your brothers and sisters who at Easter have received baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Latin observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan at his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I, I do. do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I, I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I, I do. do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I, I do. do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we rejoice in the goodness of the Father who sent his Son to save us from sin. With renewed hope in the glorious kingdom to come, we place our needs before the throne of God. Please respond, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Mark, and all the faithful who believe in the risen Lord, May they rejoice in the gift of salvation and strive to follow the way of Christ, we pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For political leaders and all those in authority, may they be freed from the darkness of evil and rejoice in the true freedom that comes from belief in the gospel and service to our neighbors, we pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for this parish community. May we grow together in faith and holiness, always seeking a deeper share in the Lord's Paschal mystery. We pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. prayer. For doctors, nurses, specialists, and technicians, for the police, fire, and all emergency responders, for those who care for the elderly, the homeless, and the helpless, and for all who put the lives of others before their own, we pray. Risen, Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, homebound, the elderly, and the hospitalized, Margaret Marin, Glenda Bloom, Katie Ehlers Stanley, Rick Novella, all those named in our bulletin, and for all who need the Lord's peace and healing, we pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. prayer. For Kevin Jeanette, Patricia Boyd, and all the faithful who sleep in Christ, may they enter into the joy of God's kingdom, we pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers and for our personal intentions, We pray. Risen Savior, Savior, hear our prayer. prayer. Holy Mary, health of the sick, we seek refuge under your protection. O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. God, our Creator, hear the prayers of your people who bask in the glow of this holiest of days. Give strength and courage to all who seek you, and bring us one day to share in your everlasting glory. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Risen One, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exalt and with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice but your work by which your church is wonderfully reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us up an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to conform in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you. Are they passing from this life, give them kind admission to your kingdom, that they hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And to the Spirit, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold our risen Lord, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ the Lord is risen again, Christ has conquered death and sin. Hark the angel choirs raised, songs of everlasting praise, Alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, on behalf of Father Antony, Deacon Michael, the staff here at St. Benedict, and myself, I would just like to extend to you and your families a very happy and blessed Easter. We pray that our risen Lord will fill your hearts with his new life, with hope, with joy, and his abiding peace. We would also like to thank you for your thoughtfulness, 
in your words of encouragement and graciousness to us, through your emails, your phone calls, your beautiful Easter cards. Know that during these liturgies, especially today, we carry you in our hearts and in our thoughts. Be assured you are with us as we pray and celebrate these joyful mysteries. We hope again that you have a blessed day and happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and an exalting spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, Alleluia.